Blog Talk Radio. Detroit and struggling with the Pistons tonight as well. 
Yeah, you know, like I said before, Ty, uh, I'm concerned about the Lakers this year. They got a lot of new pieces. I think I lo- uh, they lost uh, two huge key pieces to their championship run in uh, Dwight Howard and uh, Javal McGee. Uh, that, that's a huge loss, and we're starting to see that this year. And uh, watching that game last night, I'm going to like echo Doc Rivers and Embiid uh, saying that the Sixers shouldn't have had that last shot. The Sixers should have took care of business. You know what I mean? The Lakers were lackluster the whole game. They came back in the last two minutes, made it interesting, took the lead, and then Tobias hits the game-winning shot with two seconds. So uh, Philadelphia, <clears throat> definitely uh, an up-and-coming team in the East. I think they're for real, being able to bang with the Lakers like they did. They led the whole game, you know, and they were up by 13, 15 points at one point. So uh, the Lakers, uh, uh, it's concerning right now. And just like you said, they're not with Anthony Davis right now against the Pistons, but they should still be taking care of business uh, against a team like that. So uh, it, it's concerning right now. Um, it, they, it's When you watch the Lakers, um, they – they don't have an identity right now, They're especially on offense. Uh, these guys are just passing the ball, and it's like everybody doesn't know what to do. They don't have an offensive scheme. So, uh, you know, you bring in Schroeder, and, uh, you know, some nights he puts up 16. The other night he's putting up four points. You got Mark Gasol, who, you know, he hasn't even got over 10 points this year. So uh, the offense is, is very sporadic. You know, uh, yesterday Kyle Kuzma only ended up with three points. They brought in Wesley Matthews, the guys averaging under six points a game. Uh, Contavious Caldwell Pope uh, is underperforming. So, uh, you know, it's concerning right now uh, in L.A. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm worried about uh, uh, if Frank Vogel knows what to do with this team. you got Marquise Morris, you got Talon Horton Tucker, Harrell, and all these guys. And, uh, you know, uh, he's having a hard time uh figuring out what roster works best and he's had time to do this you know we're already uh 18 games into the season so uh he, they're gonna have to figure it out pretty quick because uh you know to go against a team like the sixers or even the nets in a seven game series or or for that matter we can even bring in utah or the nuggets you know two uh powerhouses in the west uh I don't know if the, how the Lakers are playing if they're going to be able to repeat at this point. So, uh, you know, it's uh, they're going to have to get it together real quick here. Wait, hold on. Don't don't you start getting too down now. Don't don't do this. this is no, I, I'm January. just calling it how it is. You, you I, I mean, hey, check to, it out. Hold, like, on, hold on. You got me. Wait, hold on. You got me ready to send you a bag of cotton candy from a carnival or something just to cheer you up because I don't <laughs> I don't like this. Cause, Beginning of the season, you were like, oh, Ty, here we go. Championship yeah. number 18 on the way. Woo! And all this other stuff. Now yep. they lose the game in the middle of Philadelphia, and this is you crying right now. Now here go. Here's no, no, no. I'm not, hey, uh, hey, check. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm on, not hold crying. Hold, wait, 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 wait. I'll let you do what you do. Listen, I'm, I'm keeping right. it I'm real right as now. a non-biased today, sports opinion. Today, I, I, this is I, right. realistic right here. Right. Listen, I'm going to stop this today. When I rant, please let me finish. Everybody, including Sirius, Barry, every last one of you, I want to finish because I let you guys finish. Now, now, the fact of the matter, you say that you feel iffy about the championship situation when you came at it beginning of the season, didn't want to hear nothing I was saying. And that, that's, that's not even what I want to pick on or pick up the point at. I just wanted to just – I just got to jab you because you're my brother, so I got to do that. But this is one thing that I am worried about because I do give Coach Vogel credit because he's a decent coach. I don't want to take anything away from it, and you said that he doesn't have a game plan. I think he does. I just think that the, the pieces that they have in L.A. have not gelled yet. I feel like the turnover from last year was so short coming into this year because of what we all had to face dealing with the coronavirus situation. So these pieces have the mess. And I'm looking at the same box score that you're looking at. KCP played 27 minutes, right? He shot the ball three times and hit one three-pointer, and that was it. He's the best shooter on the team. Find somebody exactly. that shoots better than him. Maybe Wes Matthews. Like, if I put Wes Matthews potentially in the conversation. If you want to put Caruso in the conversation, yeah, I, I can do that. But um, Caldwell Pope is on the floor to stretch the floor to beat a shooter, and you guys gave him the ball to shoot three different times. In 27 minutes while he's on the floor more than half of the game, I question that. And that's more or less with the players and how Vogel has to, you know, kind of bring accountability out of these guys. He didn't just win the championship with just LeBron and AD just brutally just 
using their physical talent to win. He had to come up with a game plan also to win that. So I'm not going to totally point the fingers at Vogel, but this is concerning up against the 76ers team who won against with the Sixers winning against the Lakers with Ben Simmons, who doesn't shoot the ball, and Tobias Harris ended the game on them. Like, that's the one thing that I'm looking at entering today. Anthony Davis is out tonight up against the Pistons, too, with a nagging injury that they said that he's out up against the Pistons, and they do have a tight game in their hands right now. Um, Sirius, your thoughts on what's taking place in Philadelphia as of last night? Are you feeling a certain way about that flagrant foul? Because I do. I, I really feel like it was a, a funny, dirty play. And um, your thoughts on at least both of these teams going in the same direction. I don't want to say one's going in another direction and one isn't. Uh-huh. So I'm going to say this about the player and foul. Joel and B, you know, said if, if the shoe was on the other foot, he would have been ejected. Um, and I can't help but agree with them on, on that standpoint. But what LeBron James did there uh, was really bush league in my opinion. Um, and again, if, if that happens to anybody else, um, they're getting ejected and a fine from the league, and it's just not, it's not going to be a good look. So I agree with them beat there. As far as signifying that the Lakers are in trouble, or I'm worried about the Lakers, I'm not worried one bit about the Los Angeles Lakers going forward. I mean, let's keep it, let's keep it a buck, all right? This is the Los Angeles Lakers team that, you know, for much of this season is playing bored. Like, they, there's really not a team really that can bang with them. I understand that the 76ers, you know, won yesterday's game, but the 76ers have their own issue. They're coached by Doc Rivers, a.k.a. I'm allergic to the conference final. So I, I'm, 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 I'm not buying that the Lakers fans or, or, or the Lakers are in some significant trouble. Do they have things they have to work on? Yes, so do the rest of the teams in this league. Are, 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 are they falling victim? Are they falling victim of potentially, you know, being, you know, bored? I'm sure they might be. But to sit here and, and say that I'm worried about the Los Angeles Lakers because they don't play defense, I'm sorry. They got arguably the defensive player of the year in Anthony Davis, who is not miss, who, who is not playing tonight. LeBron James, who can switch from one to five and shut down pretty much anybody else. Wesley Matthews plays defense. Caldwell Pope plays defense. You know what I'm saying? You've got a defensive-minded coach in Frank Vogel. Jason Kidd is known for his defense on the coaching staff. Again, I'm not sitting here. I, I, I'm not going to let that rot. I can't let that rot. You know what I'm saying? So, again, whatever's going on tonight is going on tonight. I mean, they're playing the Detroit Pistons. The game is not over yet. I mean, we're sitting there trying to put the nail in the coffin for the Los Angeles Lakers for tonight's game, and we're still not even at halftime yet. So, uh, come on, gentlemen. We we, we are better than this. I understand that we are trying to, you know, push content out to the people. But let's not get on these airways and start talking reckless. Ain't nobody in their right mind worried about the Los Angeles Lakers, period. Okay, we do have Vinny and Q. Vinny, welcome to the Crossover Cafe. How are you feeling tonight? What's up, guys? How, how you doing? I agree with you. I agree with you, Sirius. That's, uh, there's no reason to try and, and make up. Uh, well, first off, uh, I'm sorry I'm a little late. I, there, was, there was a power outage, and uh, it's like uh, Seattle here the past few days in, in uh, uh, Santa Cruz, California. It's been, it's been raining. We need it, but it's been raining for, for a little bit. He- hello to everybody. Um, with that aside, I agree with you, Sirius. There's no reason to to worry about the Los Angeles Lakers. They're going to be just fine. Uh, I actually, I, I, so if I, I do fantasy basketball, so so that keeps me really interested in what's going on. But for the for the casual fan who doesn't and isn't really like a gambler or anything, the NBA regular season's got to be like kind of boring because we know who's going to be in there in the, in the playoffs and we know who the we can kind of guess who the final four teams are going to be in each, in each league. And uh, the Lakers are, are definitely one of them. And uh, the question is, is for me with the Lakers, are they, or are they not going to win it again? Are they going to win another championship? That's just, uh, that's just the one thing people could question about them. They, I think they got better. Uh, one person you didn't mention on that defense is, is that, that center, the big guy, Harrell, uh, from, from the, from the Clippers. He makes their, them better on defense also. 
And so does Schroeder. Schroeder, Schroeder. He's a good, he's a scrappy defensive defensive player too. That they got a lot better, they got a lot better on defense with who they picked up. Because LeBron's smart like that. He knows what he's doing. He's uh, he's kind of like the GM and the uh, the point guard and the coach uh, all, all in one, and the and the and the agent too. <laughs> but um, but yeah, no, he he they're they're running a tight ship over there, and they're gonna be they're gonna be just fine for for, for the for the for this year at least, but barring injury, but um, I'm confident in the Lakers' potential to win another one for sure. Of course, they'll be one of the favorites to come out of the Western Conference, but right now with this situation going on, this is a game that they must win up against Philadelphia. They only played the Sixers twice, and this could potentially be one of the teams that they meet down the road. This is why it was thrown out there to see how things were being felt. I know uh, the Lakers are definitely one of the forefront runners, especially trying to defend their championship, and also with one of the top three or best player in the league in LeBron James on that team. But ever, that's the reason ever. I threw that out there is, is because oh, – hold on. Because of the, the reason why I threw that out there was because of the storm of the foul that LeBron did, and a lot of people – have overlooked a lot of the dirty stuff that LeBron has done in the years. And I've been talking with somebody outside of the kitchen um, and trying to – and the person was trying to say LeBron is the dirtiest superstar of all time. And I got to a big debate about that, and I threw at least four or five names into the hat. So that's the only reason why I brought that topic up, because this was something hot, fresh out of the oven. So it's not like I'm worried or concerned about the Lakers right now. This is interesting that the Pistons are giving them a fight as bad as the Pistons are. Um, doing on this season to give a team like the Lakers a, a run. If Anthony Davis really means that much to the lineup, then that question remains in front of the Lakers. Like, what if AD gets in foul trouble? Is LeBron enough to carry this? So that's one thing that I'm looking you know, at in this situation you know right now. I'm not saying why. that all the Lakers can't get back. All right, go ahead, man. Uh, I know I hear you, but the reason why I, I like the regular season is that also um, watching the Lakers and some of these other teams is watching some of these young players uh, grow grow into their own and really be- become uh, NBA players, become men, and actually contribute to their teams. Some some rookies kind of come in there, and um, you watch them. And maybe they're not that they're not contributing all that much in the beginning, but then towards the end of the year, maybe this guy Wiseman on, on Golden State, um, maybe he plays more in the playoffs and he can make a push because he's a, he's really talented. But that's what that's rookie are we talking about here? It's the Lakers. It's the Lakers. We're not talking about Golden State. What rookie are we we're talking about for the Lakers or the Seventy Six in the matchup? You cut me off to say that. Well, what book are we talking about? Uh, no, I'm just talking about big picture. Why the regular season would would grab grab our interest? It would be be interesting to to watch and, and to like to take part in it. To see, I like watching how the the rookies come in and they're they're so. Uh, um, I don't mean to change the subject on you. You want to talk about the Lakers? Yeah, because it has the to be relevant. I'll talk about that too. You got to be relevant. You got to be relevant with the topic. Like this is the discussion. Like you went. Golden State. Well, I'm, I got topics for Golden State. We're not kids here. <laughs> we'll get to Golden State. Okay. Anybody else have anything to allude to from what I said before we get away from it? At least the foul, because Sirius hit on it with what Joel Embiid said. And I rightfully feel like Joel Embiid has something to talk about right there with uh, him being, if you know, one of the guys that the league looks at or people in the office look at as being a repeat offender because – you know, there were games where Joel Embiid got the crowd involved and try to, you know, spark something between him and Russell Westbrook or Paul George. Is that a fair assessment? I'll come to you, Eric, because Sarah did allude to that also. Do you think that's fair, or do you think that's like water under the bridge because it was LeBron, because that push was pretty brutal, and a guy that's 7'3 and over 280 pounds falling flat on his back with back issues, that's a huge situation. If you jump in the air, because I played ball all my life, if you jump in the air and somebody puts a fingertip on you, you're going to fly. So imagine LeBron James, strong as he is, two hands in his stomach, push him to the ground. That's, that's a brutal play. Absolutely. There's no doubt in my mind. And just like Sirius uh, mentioned, uh, anybody else in the league, that's an a ejection from the game. LeBron James uh, kind of gets the uh, superstar treatment. You know what I mean? And it's not right. You know, that was definitely – a dirty play, and he's made a few of those that this year already. So, uh, uh, yeah, anybody else in this league, it would have been an automatic ejection, flagrant foul, the whole nine yards. So, uh, you know, uh, that's it's unfortunate, but that's the way it is. It's like, uh, you know, Michael Jordan back in the day. I mean, he would get 
all kinds of calls, you know what I mean? He was allowed to carry the ball over, travel, you know, and he'd get fouls called. So I just think it's unfortunate. It's the nature of the game, you know what I mean? So uh, that's that's exactly what happened, but uh, no doubt should have been ejected. And uh, I just wanted to touch uh, one thing, too. Uh, Talon Horton Tucker, you know, watch this kid. This kid's going to be a star in this league. Uh, and every time they have him out yep, on the floor, yep. the guy produces. He's he's amazing. Um you know what I mean? He's played eight minutes tonight and already put up eight points. Every, I mean, every game he's in, he's electrifying on offense. He can play defense. He's all over the place. So the Lakers do need to find a way to get him out on the floor because he's just more than uh, a rookie coming off the bench, you know, in crunch time. This guy actually makes a difference when he's out there. Yeah, that's what I was talking okay. about. I, these players, they – they they come in there and you don't really hear about him like he wasn't a highly touted rookie but now he is making a difference on this team and I bet he gets some some minutes in the playoffs I I could see him if he keeps on progressing the way he is. All right, is there anything else that we like to allude to before we get away from it? Because he did have a two point outing last night, and um, I mean. As, as time goes on, he'll probably get progress, but in these type of games, we're really going to need another another shooter or some type of ammunition, these players are going to have to step up. Otherwise, these questions will remain in front of the Lakers. They will face some tougher teams down the road. I feel like they will be in the Western Conference Finals, but it'll be a tougher road. I actually had somebody come up to me and say the Lakers are going to sweep throughout the playoffs. I'm like, they won't win 16 or 12 straight. I I don't think that's in them, but I think that they can be one of the bigger representatives in the Western Conference Finals. That's just me. I just feel it, and – they're, they're going to need help. And, and I, you know, one thing I look at with the Lakers right now, too, is, is them trying to find that identity as soon as they're bringing the ball up or running their half-court set. I think they more or less move the ball until they see a, an open screen for somebody to get an open shot, and that's what they're working with. And a lot of times they, they fall in love with the jump shot. That is the one thing that I am seeing with the Lakers right now, that a lot of them start hoisting threes, whether it's Anthony Davis on the perimeter where he likes to stay outside, Schroeder, which I've seen about the past three years with him and OKC, he likes to stay outside. Caldwell Pope being a notable shooter. The twin Morris is a shooter. Kuzma stays outside. West Matthews is a shooter. Caruso comes in and shoots shots. So if they're all going to stay outside, who is it? Who's going to be in there paint rebounding? Who Gasol and Gasol doesn't rebound the ball like that anymore either. So and he stays outside. So it's just something to refer to. And this is something you know fresh out of the oven because this is something that happened yesterday, and they're entering a game today in which they're having an interesting game up against the Detroit Pistons. But this is without Anthony Davis. Okay, so um, looking across the board, and there was an interesting game last night with the Brooklyn Nets and the Miami Heat in which the big three were able to pull this game out up against the Miami Heat, and the total score for the Brooklyn Nets in a 132-128 matchup, they won the game. The big three go off for 89. I want to pose this to the cafe right now. Is this the best big three that we've seen potentially ever? Now, they are just getting together, right? They're just getting together, and they've had outputs of over 85 points at least two or the couple times that they've been together. Um, and I know that they, they're definitely going to have their – they're going to have the defensive issues until they get a big that can consistently uh, contest shots at the rim and them getting defensive stops by playing solid defense. But offensively, I'll say it that way. Let me say it that way. Offensively, is this the best big three that we've seen ever with the potential of these guys scoring. With Kyrie putting in, you know, 25-plus, you got Harden giving you 25-plus and 10 or a double-digit assist, and his, he can threaten to get a triple-double if he wants. And now that KD is comfortable with his role with these teams, he's putting up 30 easy uh, with no complaints. Uh, serious, I'll come to you first. Well, honestly, man, I'm I'm not ready to uh, crown them the, the, the greatest trio to, to ever play this game. Um, I need some hardware before I'm ready to do that. But I will say this. They're going to put uh, eyes on the TV. They're, they're, they're the new hot thing in the Eastern Conference or the NBA, if you will. Um, I need to see that translate in the playoffs. Because one thing that I do know about Jimmy Beard is that come crunch time, he really does disappear. So, um, yeah, KD's going to do KD type things. You don't know when the next time Kyrie's going to, you know, need, need to find himself and come playoff time, James Harden 
you know, does Houdini act and disappears, not to mention the defensive uh, situation or the lack of defense that we've all talked about on this very network a week ago from this team. Uh, where are they going to get rebounding from? Um, what are they going to do as far as playing, you know, man of defense and, 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 you know, how are they going to help the helper, so to speak? So I'm not ready to anoint them as one of the greatest trios, but they are fun to watch, you know, with, with the ball in Kyrie's hands. You know, he, he's a walking bucket. He's going to make somebody look silly um, and, and finish at the cut with either hand. James Harden, you know, perfected the step back in his handles. And what he's able to do with the basketball is, is, is you know, top notch. And, you know, again, try, name me somebody who can check KD on a regular basis. So I give them their due diligence. I give them their props of being fantabulous scorers of the basketball. But, nah, I, I, I need hardware. I, I need it, you know, when, you know, you're neck deep in, in, in the water. How, how are you going to bail yourself out? Are, are you going to quiver under the pressure um, of the playoffs? You know, this is game seven, you know, a minute and change left to go. Um, are you going to shoot, you know, one for 21 um, from the stripe? Or are you going to pout because you didn't get the call? Um, are you going to pout because – you know, the coach drew up a play for one, one, one of your teammates and one of your other uh, uh, other players to, to, to take the shot, you know, James Harden. Or are you going to, you know, get upset because you got called, you know, you know, robbing to somebody's Batman, Kyrie? I mean, I have so many questions about them right now. But, again, like I said, they're going to put, you know, eyes on the TV. They're going to put, you know, fans in seat, NBA.com. That sold out of a bunch of James Harden, Brooklyn Nets jersey, which is more money for the league. So, whoop de doo. We'll see what happens when it comes crunch time. Well, let me hold you to the fire since you're doing that. What's the best trio that you've seen ever? <sighs> I value hardware. Um, I, I really do despite value hardware. hardware. Let me let me let me let me do that. Let me do that. Despite hardware, because two of the three have championship rings. So. Despite hardware, raw talent and ability on the floor, who is your best big three? Um, I'm probably going to have to go with LeBron and um, the, that squad in Miami with D-Wade, LeBron and Bosh. Um, and I'm probably going to catch a lot of heat for that, but I, mean, I was always a big <laughs> fan of D-Wade's game. Um, I was a big fan of how he was able to – you know, change up once LeBron got there. The 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 way that Chris Bosch's game took a significant backseat when, you know, in Toronto, people forget in Toronto he was averaging damn near thirty a game. I remember the I remember the Toronto Raptors, um, and he you know took the time to South Beach and became the third guy, um, and still was a, a team player. He 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 played garbage minutes. He, he was the guy who just did exactly what Spo and LeBron and company needed him to do. Um, not to mention they, they got some hardware together because of it. Um, I think that would be my number one seed. And again, this is not this is no shade against what's going on in Brooklyn. But for me, tell you, I mean, you you, you know me for a couple of years now. You you know what I'm about. I'm I'm about them trophies, bro. I'm about them trophies, and and if you can, you know, tailor make your game for the betterment of the team and maybe take a back seat to somebody who is superior. Now, keep in mind, that was Dwayne Wade's team. Dwayne Wade got them a championship by himself. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That was Dwayne Wade's team, man. When LeBron got there, he understood that, yo, uh, it's his team now. Let me go ahead and, you know, back seat drive and passenger seat drive this thing. That way we can get more done together collectively. I just don't see that mentality right now coming from um, what's going on in Brooklyn. Now, I could be made wrong, believe me. I'm going to be here all year. So if I'm wrong, believe me, I could eat that. But right now, I can't say it. Oh, you just buckle up because it's, it's going to go down. Don't worry. So um, how, how about you, Vinny? Your, your thoughts on Brooklyn um, with them potentially having the best three or the best big three? And if you have a team that had a better big three, please allude to them. And any thoughts to the game that went down with them in the heat last night? Um, thank you for the question. Do they have the best big three ever? Uh, that's a tough question to answer because the game has changed so much and it's, uh, it's fireworks now. 
it's run and, 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 and score and score and then score some more. And there's no more physicality like there used to be with those Piston teams and the Bulls teams. Um, so if you want to say the best big three ever, I don't, I'm not, I'm not going to give it to them. Um, I think they're, I think they're in for trouble. I think that they, I don't like what they did. I hope that they, I want to see them prove me wrong. I want to see Brooklyn get a, cha- uh, a championship or something great, but I can't, I can't see it with, with them. Um, they just, it's just too many, too many scores, too many of us. It's like the same kind of player. The best big three ever. That 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 would be the Bulls. That would be. I just watched the the Jordan the Jordan story. Um, yeah, that's the best big three ever. With uh, I'll give it to Rodman and and uh, or maybe you can go Horace Grant the first one, but but I'll give it to Rodman and Pippen and uh, and Jordan. And how did they treat Pippen like that? I mean, I can't even believe how that guy got short. <laughs> he got the short end of the stick so bad. You want to talk about how winners write history? And they kind of tell the story on how something is. And Jordan was made out, and rightfully so. Obviously, it's Jordan the, to be such a group, such a basketball god. But, but Pippen was right up there with him. Pippen was just, he was really good. He, I, I didn't know he was kind of a, he looked like kind of a dick. I mean, it's the way that some ways, some, some of the ways the, the um, ESPN thing, the Jordan Files or whatever it was called, um, made him seem. But, uh, he was a really, he was a really good player. But they and they complemented each other perfectly. Um, for the, they're the, the best big three in my opinion. The the Brooklyn Nets last night. Um, I loved that game because I I had so the thing about when you do fantasy basketball is you score points as the, the players get uh, a point a basket a three point basket block or something. So when a game happens to go into overtime, it's uh, that's extra ex- exciting. Because um, you could now you have a uh, uh, that's a, the, sort of the, the gambling element to, to fantasy sports, especially basketball, because you get extra minutes. And if you get extra minutes, yeah, obviously you you get you get the points. The way I look at um, players is like how many minutes they play and how many points they score per minute. Their usage rate, and uh, you, you the, so the, if you have three very high usage rates, uh, like uh, Durant and Harden and Kyrie. Usage rate meaning you the ball is in your hands. You're gonna either pass it, you're gonna shoot it, um, you are gonna you're gonna be involved in the play. And they're so those three are very high usage rates and they're on the same team on the on the floor at the same on the floor at the same time. It's hard. It's 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 uh it's gonna take chemistry and, and work to make that happen and I don't I don't know if there's time for that this year. But we'll we'll see. Crazier crazier things have happened though. That's uh but my but my favorite big three though, uh give give me Jordan, give me Pippen and uh Rodman. Eric, your thoughts on the situation of the game that took took place in Miami up against the Heat with the Brooklyn Nets winning that game 132-128, to 128, in which these the three of them accounted for 89 of the 132 points scored, um, with that 43 points for the remainder of the team, and they were able to eke that one out up against the team that won the, what, the East last year, um, even though I feel like that's a shell of themselves because they're, they're waiting for pieces to come back. Um, as time goes on, I think they will gel more. Uh, your thoughts on the game? Do you think they they are the best victory that you've ever seen offensively? Um, and I'll let you detail that. Uh, uh, there's no doubt that uh, potentially they can be. Uh, they're definitely exciting to watch. Um, I, I'm more with serious on this one. I, I, I'd like to see hard uh, hardware because, you know, they could be great all they want, you know, uh, but if they don't win championships – then, uh, you know, what is it for? So, I mean, you play this game to win, and, uh, you know, well, the only time is going to tell with them. So they, they need a few more pieces to be champions, as as we all know. Uh, definitely the chemistry is there. They're all able to put up big points. So, uh, you know, that that's, uh, you know, a, a positive thing right there. They are able to play and coexist with each other because that was the main question when, when this trade went down. So uh, the Brooklyn Nets... Uh, the, ver- the verdict's still out on that. You know what I mean? It's going to take time. Uh, so I don't really want to get ahead of myself here. But I will tell you this. My three uh, are very easy. Big Game James, Magic Johnson, and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. The hardware's there, uh, and they dominated a whole decade. So, uh, And these guys are, you know, three of the 50 greatest NBA players of all time. So... 
that's that's definitely my big three, and uh, you know I'd like to see what the Nets can pull off. So the, the verdict's still out on them. Yeah, that, that's a team I can respect. That's that's the fight. I like that with Matt. I can never. You won't win me over with Magic. No matter what, you're going to win me over. All right? I'm mad at you because you're a Laker fan because you know you're going to give me that debate. That's the only team that I may give it to. That Heat team, they they had a good team, and they won the championship. And the crazy part about that is they had to go through the same storm that this Nets team went through because they lost that first year when they got together. Dallas knocked them off in a six-game series. So, they had to finally get it with that next coming series and season going up against the Thunder where they had to pull that off. Um, interesting big three from the Heat. I like that one. But the the Bulls situation, like, I think that was more Mike and Pippen heavy and Dennis getting his rebounds and defense. And, like, comparing them, well, that three to this, I think that the Nets have the edge there, even though I am a Jordan fan. I can't say and act like I'm not. And I love a re, uh, rebounding game that, Robin brought and Pippen's defense helped too. And I can't take the role players away from Mike and what they were able to do in the midst of the 90s when we were all coming up. But I, I would give the Nets the edge, especially when I'm committing to saying offensively. I'm not saying on both sides of the ball because then, then, then you would look at the defensive side of the ball and it would be Jordan Pippen and Rodman defensively would be the best trio that I'm thinking of. So the Lakers would be the best that I'm looking at because Kareem is the all-time leading scorer. Magic was the all-time leading assist guy before he was forced to retire. And big game James was one of those guys that just streaked down the floor and, and finished or exactly. got his stuff going while Magic was setting up half court. So it, it was it was a lot for the Lakers. The Lakers would be one of the bigger names or bigger teams that I could think of big three-wise that I could compete with these guys. And this is early because I feel like their gelling is going to come. These guys are big shot takers, all three of them. And um, a lot of people pick on the fact that Harden – and Kyrie, you know, are, are ball dominant, and which it can be, but this was when the situation where they were with their teams. Harden was doing that with Houston because there was no real big piece next to him other than, what, three years of Chris Paul and a year with Russ. Everything else, it was like he had his role players to try to fill that void. So it was like I understand what Harden was trying to accomplish. And um, looking at Kyrie's situation, Kyrie had the ball without LeBron for a while until LeBron got there, and they made their NBA Finals run, in which they got one and Kyrie knocked down the game-winning shot for their lone championship together. So they all have what it takes. And then when KD got to the uh, finals, he buried LeBron himself. Like, LeBron was leaving the court, and that's the first time I recall a sweep in the NBA Finals for a long time. I, I can't even think the, oh, the last sweep was uh, when Houston swept Orlando back in 95. That's the last time I could think of somebody getting swept in an NBA Finals. So I, I don't know. This, this, this is a very interesting question to, like, throw out there to the – to the wolves, if you will, or to the chefs here in the kitchen. But that that was an interesting discussion I did want to bring here, um, at least big three-wise. And we, we're only like, I, I want to say, this is the second week of them being together. Um, we're approaching All-Star Weekend, and there's another interesting thing, seeing from this Brooklyn Nets team, uh, one of the guys not making the All-Star break, and I think it's Kyrie uh, on voting, and that was something that people were talking about. But as they're trying to put it together and, Kyrie trying to stay away from the voters and, and people that may be in a fan favor because he sat out some time is why I threw that right here. And um, I understand why people feel a little bitterness toward what Kyrie was doing, but it's like I'm still going to look at him as being a, a top three point guard in the East. I'm still going to say that. Like if, if you could find three guards better than him in the East, I I like to hear him. But nevertheless, I, I mean, I'm, I'm going to get away from that because that, that's out of my hands because that's that fan favorite stuff too on how people feel about Kyrie at this point in time. Okay, so I'm going to get away from that, interesting enough. Um, anything that you guys like to throw out there or I can keep cooking? Um, Tears, I'll come to you. Any NBA topic that you like to throw out there around to the people? You know, man, uh, I, 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 I live here in, in Metro Washington, um, and obviously the, the big trade that took place uh, – this off season was John Wall uh, coming to Houston for Russell Westbrook, um, and you know th- th- there's an issue going on right now with the Washington Wizards, um, and Bradley Beal, his name is being floated around as possible 
uh, trade options. You know, he, he, he's shown disheveled and frustrated on the bench. Um, you know, I, I listen to a lot of uh, sports talk radio, and I, I do a lot of different, you know, things on social media platforms. And one of the things that is being talked about right now, well, there's a couple of things being talked about right now around the subject, and I'm going to throw this around the kitchen. We can answer this, you know, how you see fit. First and foremost, um, is Scott Brooks in trouble? Um, that's the first question. And I'm, I'm going to preface this by saying, you know, COVID, temp- COVID ran through the Washington Wizards organization. Uh, they had literally almost two weeks off from playing. You're down. Your center and Thomas Bryan, who is an emerging star at the position, um, you're down a couple more people. First, that's the first question. Second question, if Bradley Beal um, were to be traded, you know, where? You know, everybody's, you know, putting him in Los Angeles with the Lakers. I, I posted something in a group thread earlier today about that, you know, just being ha-ha funny, but. Um, it's something that, you know, might actually go down. Bradley Beal may be on the move. Um, and thirdly, and most importantly, is there something going on physically with Russell Westbrook? You know what I'm saying? I mean, this is a guy wait, who? Wait, 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 who? Wait, who? Not, not the time, wait, who? not the time, Todd, not the time. Who? Not the wait, time, I, I didn't hear not you. Todd, Todd, Todd. Wait, I didn't Ty. hear you. Todd. Wait, Ty. Tell, me, Ty. tell me again, Ty. please. Todd, please. Ty. Say the name. I, I need you to say say it again, Tyrone. please. Tyrone. Please. Tyrone. I need you to please Tyrone. say that again, please. Tyrone. Tyrone. Please. You sit please. there and oh, you sit, hold on a second. You sit there and bitch and moan about people cutting you off. Shut up. Let me finish talking. Thank you. So, Come on, man. Don't curse Russell on Westbrook. air, man. Cut it out. Russell, Russell, Russell Westbrook right now yeah. is, is he hurt? Yes or no? Those are my three questions, and I will talk to you guys later. Um, is he hurt? That that uh, I don't know because he's out there playing. Um, there was something that he was concerned about. Um, and he he missed some time. But here's an interesting stat out there. Um, the Wizards are zero and ten. This this is a bad stat. They are zero and ten when Bradley Beal scores over forty points. Like he's your shooting guard. He's the ammunition. He's taking the shots that he wants to take. Um, and Bradley Beal isn't one of those guys offensively that's forcing the shot. So I'm like, this is what you want at the end of the day, and you guys still are bad while he's playing this type of ball. He's the only other player in Wizards history to score 60 points outside of Bernard King. I, I, I don't know what it's going to take. They're saying that, you know, if, if the Warriors should make a push for him, but then it's like, what if Klay Thompson makes his way back? Um, I don't know what they're going to do with the Wiggins and uh, – Ubre at the the three position, they, they're looking like they may end up being overloaded with the pieces that they have there. If they could try to get Bradley Bill there, uh, interesting to try to throw either the Clippers or the Lakers into the discussion to try to get Bradley Bill there. This is definitely a huge situation. Uh, I'll come to you next, Benny. Your thoughts on the Bradley Bill situation in Washington, and do you agree with what Siri said about Brooks being gone? If if Brooks leaves, then what do they do? Is this a, a down season? They are the worst team in the Eastern Conference. Okay. Uh, yeah, thanks Thanks for the questions. Um, yeah, the, the the thing that people don't uh, realize, uh, I'm going to get to the question, but I want to say this first. People don't realize, I feel like, and I don't know how, about basketball is that it takes chemistry. Like, you guys, like, you have to, it's, it's not a, like the individuals, yeah, that's what sells and that's what is going to draw fans to the game and that and all that. And it's great. I like it too, but, if the teams that really win championships, if you look at them, it's like the Clay, Steph, and, and Draymond, and they're just, like, smooth the way they pass and everything. And um, a lot of these teams that, that, that do really well are, are, are teams that have the, the, the chemistry. So bringing somebody on board like, uh, so say the Lakers were to get Bradley. First of all, I think Bradley Beal is a great player. I think he's, I think he's, I think he's, better, he's the best player on that team. He's better than, I think he's better than Westbrook. And I'm a little bit younger, too, obviously. But if, if the Lakers were to get Beal, yeah. I would say that he would have to take a step back. It's, and that's hard. And so, so, actually, you know what? I'm not going to say that's hard for Beal because he's done it. He, he did it a little bit with Wall. He kind of took a little bit of a back, back, back seat with, with John Wall there. And now 
it's like kind of he's trying to do it. He hasn't played too much with Westbrook, but you, you can see him. Like I, I'll talk about go back to fantasy with it. His usage rate does not go down at all when Russell Westbrook is on the floor with him. So when they're both on the floor together, he's still doing the same thing as he would be doing as if he were on the floor alone. Um, and but when he's when when Russell Westbrook, Westbrook does not play, that's when he's just elevated and he's a superstar. And, but it becomes more of a one man show. And if it's a one man show, then what are we missing? We're missing the chemistry. And when when you're missing the chemistry, you're you're you're, you're losing team. And that's why and that's people like Scott Brooks then to bring it all together um, are going to be in trouble because your team is not playing as a team. It's it's, it's an individual. It's, it's and and that's that's kind of a coach's job is to get them to play in with that. I'll bring it even back to where I was talking about before with the big three with Bulls, they got, um, when they got Phil Jackson, like, what Phil Jackson did, these are big egos. <laughs> you got Dennis Rodman, you got Scotty Pippen, Michael Jordan. But what, and what Phil Jackson did is he bought like this, it was just a perfect match. He bought like this Zen Buddhist um, kind of LA, California vibe to, to this, to the Chicago city. And, and it, and it worked like is Scott Brooks. What is, is he doing that? I, I like Scott Brooks. I think he's a, he's a, a, a good mind. It's just that there's more to it than just actually knows being a basketball coach. You just have to be able to to uh, mold these personalities, these big egos, these these players that have had nothing but success, and everybody telling them their whole lives that they're the greatest. And and um, now now that you're going to come in there and try and get them to to work on a blueprint as a plan and and work as a unit, and that's that's hard. But that's what LeBron gets everybody to do. So that's so, so and he, LeBron is just good at it. Some players are just good at it because they don't have even LeBron James is just humble. He doesn't need you to tell him he's the best because he knows he's the best. And that's, that's, uh, but he doesn't use it. Ar- I feel like he's not really arrogant about it. I like LeBron James. I, I question some of his stuff um, off the field, but I think on the field, on the court, he's a, he's a leader. Um, if, if, if Bradley Beal were to, were to go to them, I think he would take a back seat and, Lakers will win another championship. I I hope that doesn't happen because I don't think the Lakers need anything else. But um, Bradley Beal's got a, a good career ahead of him. I don't I don't know if it's going to be with Scott Brooks. I don't see them pulling it together this year. That's for sure. I heavily disagree with you with the, the Scott Brooks being a uh, a good mind. Um, I think a lot of the physical abilities that he's had around him pushed him. I watched him take an OKC team. Uh, and try to gel these guys together at a young age and just lose the wheels off of that team when they were all 20 and 21 and 22 years old. Like, they all were, like, bigger than his situation. And then, what, four years later, he was removed from OKC because he ran bad sets. He didn't have these uh, pieces together. A lot of people were moved out of that lineup and sent different places where he could have probably spoke up for these players. He goes down to D.C., and he hasn't had a winning season yet in the Eastern Conference. Like, he was in the Western Conference and had that happening. He was one of the top three teams almost every year while KD, Russ, and, you know, the two years Harden emerged as the sixth man out there, that they were top of the West. So he, he was he, – I could say easily, if he had that basketball mind that you're giving him, I could say he can get 44 wins easy to have them two games over 500. He was not able to do that yet. Like, they've had a bad run since he's been there. And and a superstar all star and Bradley Bill and John Wall, even though John Wall's missed a season or two, but it has not materialized at all while he's been on that sideline. So I think it's more or less he's been helped by the pieces that he has around him instead of him being the head coach that could steer that ship. And I could see if he was a coach out of college, uh, you know, like the notable college football coaches that you could think of, or when Coach Cal tried to come out of UMass to try to run the show in New Jersey with the Nets and they sent him right back to college because he couldn't do anything in the league. This is a guy that played in the NBA. He knows everything about the league. He's come off of the sidelines and being an assistant coach. And it's not like it's a situation where he doesn't know how to be around big star talent. He won the championship with Hakeem Olajuwon and Kenny Smith and those guys. So he's been around big personalities. There's not no way that he can't talk to these guys when he was with Houston with Clyde Drexler and them, at least a dream teamer. So, like, I, I'm I'm not buying that from what Brooks can actually say to these guys and knowing that he knows the game of basketball for at least 30 years now, at least 30 years now. So that that's a whole nother situation in itself. And like I said, that's that that's around Bradley Bill. I, I don't, I don't feel comfortable talking about people losing their job or 
things of that nature because I was one of the people that was saying that they got to get rid of Scott Brooks while he was in OKC. But at least for Bradley Bill's sake, because it's another player that I want to hit on too in the same light, but I'm going to stick to the Bradley Bill situation. For them to be 0-10 when he is dumping out on these dudes, if he is scoring more than 40 points, they lose automatic. It's like 100% the Wizards will lose when this guy is having a good game, including him scoring 60 points this year. They still lost. They still lost. Like, you feel bad in the locker room? Like, like my 60-point effort don't count because we lost? Like, like get, get, get him out of there. Get him out of there. That's it. Like, like, I don't want to see him come to the West because I know he'll be on a powerhouse or make a team in the West a powerhouse. But, like, for analytical purposes, do not let him stay in D.C. for another season. That will be absolutely brutal if he sits there and isn't able to contribute in a positive manner, and he's not a gunner. He's not one of those guys that's ball-dominant and taking more than 17 dribbles to get a shot off. Like, that's not what Bradley – Bradley Bill is within the offense, letting the offense come to him, and he's knocking down shots. I, I don't feel like that's fair by any means. And I'm, I'm passionate about this one. I'm, like, I'm at the edge of my seat because I, I, I don't like the Gators at all in Florida, but I am a Bradley Bill fan by, by every stretch of the means. And he plays basketball the way the game needs to be played. And only purists, only basketball purists recognize and realize what this guy is able to bring to the game. Um. Eric, I, I, I'm not sure if I got you to allude to the situation. Your thoughts on the Bradley Bill situation in Washington, and also if you'd like to add to the Scott Brooks scenario that's serious throughout. Yeah, first and foremost, I'm going to agree with you, Ty, and I'm going to touch on the Scott Brooks uh, incident because uh, the Washington Wizards actually on paper have had some pretty uh, good teams. And when you got a guy like Bradley Beal, uh, you, you should be uh, performing at a, at a higher level and getting more wins. Uh, at the beginning of the year when they did this trade, it was like, wow, maybe uh, this this is going to be really fun to see Westbrook and Beal team up, and they have some quality pieces around them. Again, on paper, Washington Wizards, a quality team. And for them to be 3-11 and right now is, uh, is head-scratching. And, you know, last night he puts up 47 points in a losing effort. Granted, they didn't have Westbrook. But uh, you know this is a, it's it's a disaster. Uh, if Scott, uh, if they had a better coach, this team would be a lot better right now. They wouldn't have this record. They just need to be coached. And uh, if this continues, I agree with you 100 percent. Bradley Beal is a class act, great bla- basketball player, uh, phenomenal, and he deserves better. You know he's he's been the cornerstone for this franchise for years. He's been loyal. He's done what he needs to do, and, and, you know, you need to be rewarded for that. So uh, it's it's disheartening because I, I was excited at the beginning of the year. Oh, this is going to be cool. Uh, the Wizards are actually going to be in the mix. You know, they have a team that can compete and get to the playoffs. So I thought for sure they'd be a top eight, you know. Uh, so uh, Scott Brooks definitely needs to go. Um, I don't know if Russell Westbrook, is, you know, uh, something's going on to where he's not available to play uh, every game. You know, this year he's been missing a lot of games, so I, I think something's going on there. Uh, but, you know, and, and like he commented at the beginning of the year, you know, when they were on this massive losing streak, like, yeah, I'm frustrated. I'm I'm used to winning. So, uh, you know, and him coming to a team, I, I he expected to win with his team. So it's not happening um, I, I think they definitely start with a coaching change. I don't know. Uh, you know, it's good for the league, gentlemen, when you've got a lot of these good players on, on smaller market teams and stuff like that, when you make it interesting and, and have the whole league competing instead of the rich get richer, you know, with the Lakers, Clippers and such, you know, getting Bradley Beal. Yeah, that's that's cool, but at the same time it's better if you have him on a team and, and being the star of his own team and being able to make things happen instead of putting together these super teams. So I just think it's best for business. if you, The more teams uh, compete, the better. So, uh, But Bradley Beal definitely deserves better. I'd like to see uh, Washington start with a coaching change and then go from there. I know D.C. fans are, aren't, aren't happy about this conversation about – Bradley Beal, you know, leaving town, but uh, it's something that is definitely uh, in the foreseeable future if things don't change. By no me, I mean no doubt about it. So that's my stance on it. If he leaves town, 
This will be like 97, 98, when Chris Webber left to go to Sacramento. Like, this this is the same yeah. thing that D.C. will be faced with when C. Webb left. Like, I've obviously, like, I, I don't want to see this or say what I'm about to say. I said the worst team in the Eastern Conference? No. The Wizards are the worst basketball team in the NBA. They are the worst. They are worse than the Minnesota Timberwolves, in which I've been watching the Timberwolves lose game by game. It's almost like in a better purposes, it's like it's better with your percentage to bet against the Wolves because the Wolves are terrible. They're losing games at home by 20-plus to the Hawks. And not to say that the Hawks are bad because the Hawks are playing decent ball this year. Trey Young has turned things around in Atlanta. But for them to come to Minnesota and blow them out like that, and them have issues with D'Angelo Russell and Cat on the sidelines, and they're playing better ball than Washington. Yeah, I, I don't know what else to tell you. That 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 that's absurd. That that I could hold them in the same breath at this point in time, and I feel brutal because I do respect Flip Saunders and and rest his soul. That's his son there, Ryan Saunders, coaching the team, and I think they gave Ryan that job because his father had just passed away, and the, and they're holding him there because they're so dear to Flip. And looking at the situation in Washington, they have no ties to Scott Brooks. Why are y'all still keeping him there? And I feel bad that they, they're still blackballing guys like Mark Jackson, who was a good coach, the architect of the, the team that you see now out in the Bay and Golden State, and he's not able to get a job because of something that he said. I, I understand the severity of it. I'm not going to overlook what it, you know the capacity of it, but you're forgiving everybody else. Why can't he be forgiven, or why can't he go out there and get a job? I, I just don't get it. But I, I think if, if we're looking at it, what we're saying here in the kitchen right now, I think they're waiting for the totality of the season for both of these respected coaches, and uh, Ryan Saunders and in Scott Brooks, to say we're going to let you go off the greener pastures. There's no way that what you see right now, what they're able to uh, contribute to these teams that think that this is winning basketball – especially with Scott Brooks in the Eastern Conference, where it's easier from where you were just a few seasons ago in the Western Conference. I, I, I beg to differ. I, I, I just but this is what these front offices see. This is, this is what they want at the end of the day. Okay, so I'm going to get away from that one, unless you guys have anything else to allude to before I get away from that. Okay, fair enough. That silence helps me. Now, um, as you know, like I said, and I hate to kind of be like biased and a home guy, if you will, but as you, as you heard the intro song for the show today, I'm from Connecticut, and there's a guy in the NBA that, that's doing a lot of work right now, and if you've been under a tree or under a rock and have not been hearing what's going on, there's some music being played in the mountain region of the United States of America. Donovan Mitchell and the Utah Jazz are on a 10-game winning streak, and nobody's talking about it. Nobody knows what's going on, but I do. I'm paying attention. I'm watching you, Donovan, Greenwich, Connecticut kid. I mean, he was born in New York. People like trying to throw that at me, but he was brought up in Greenwich, right, the city that borders the city I'm from. So shout out to Donovan, what the Utah Jazz are up to. If you guys have been seeing this or or have an inkling toward it, I'm going to throw this one around the kitchen. Your thoughts on the Utah Jazz atop. The Western Conference right now. That's right. They are in first place in the Western Conference in front of the Lakers, in front of the Clippers, in front of everybody that you could think of that's a powerhouse in the Western Conference. The Utah Jazz are sitting atop everybody right now. And I get it. It's early. But I, I couldn't think Utah would be sitting in first place right now or streaking like the movie Old School. Uh, Eric, I'll come to you first. Your thoughts on Utah on their 10-game streak. Yeah, Quinn Snyder's got these guys playing great, man. Uh, you know, Rudy Gobert and, of course, Donovan Mitchell and Mike Conley, they are a nice complement to each other. Uh, Conley's been a great facilitator. They even got help from Jordan Clarkson, who's elevated his game. Uh, yeah, the Utah Jazz are a force to be reckoned with, folks. Uh, don't sleep on them because, uh, like, I, that's why when we were talking about this the other day about the Clippers finishing – you know, in the top three, uh, I think Utah is going to be in that one or two uh, seed at the end of the season. So whether it be the Lakers or them, 
or you know, and I'm going to throw the Nuggets in there too before the Clippers because they're starting to elevate their game and uh, showing us who they are, uh, even them getting off to a slow start. But uh, really uh, happy what I'm seeing over there in Utah. Donovan Mitchell has, you know, blossomed into a superstar right in front of our eyes. So uh, look for Utah to continue their climb in the Western Conference. Shout out to the county. Shout out to the Fairfield County. But um, I don't know. Like if if they, if I I know that this streak will end soon. I I know, and, and I'm not a Utah fan. They're a rival of mine. They're in a division that I love, uh, being in the Northwest. Um, but if he does continue, and and I, I want to be fair to him, if he can keep Utah in the top three, MVP contention. If Donovan Mitchell could keep Utah in the top three MVP contingent, I don't know if they'll give it to him because I know that they're, they'll favor LeBron or they'll, they'll favor your favorite players. You know what I'm saying? But if he if, if Utah is to remain one, two, or third seeded in the West, I, he, he's in contention. I, I, I feel like he has a, a legitimate shot to bring that back home. Sirius, your thoughts on Utah, the 10-game streak that they're on, and sitting atop the Western Conference? I'm going to say this, you know what I'm saying? Like, for, for, for me, the Utah Jazz are in the same bucket or in the same boat that I put the the, the Brooklyn Nets in. Um, I, I've seen this script before uh, from Utah. I mean, yeah, they haven't been at the top of, of the Western Conference they are now, but they held a 3-1 series lead and lost. You know what I'm saying? They're, they 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 didn't go out and get any massive uh, new piece this off season to come in and play a long slot Donovan Mitchell who you know is playing lights out basketball right now. You know what I'm saying they didn't go out and you know get a new coach to come in there and draw something else up on the board and you know run practices differently or or, or a new ball boy to you know you know make sure the balls are polished right or the Gatorade girl to, to pull a Gatorade differently. This is the same team that we saw in the bubble blow a three one lead to the Denver Nuggets team who got hot. You know what I'm saying? As a Houston Rocket fan, I am trained and programmed to hate on Utah. You know what I'm saying? With that being said, I have to give credit where credit is due. They're playing excellent ball right now. But, again, I'm not sitting here buying that. That's bad. I'm not buying that. Is that. Bad. that is bad. So. <laughs> oh, my goodness, man. I'm talking about now, right now. And you picking on them because of the history that y'all got. You still stuck on that John Stockton shot, top of the key, bang, and they win yes. the play or the yes. finals. Yes. That, that's bad. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. You can't be that way, man. You, yo, listen, you really no, are no. Barry's understudy. You are really Barry's understudy. Yes. These two are really the villains. Like, they don't want no positivity <laughs> at all. But you can't speak of any positivity. Oh, oh. Negative, okay, negative, well, all right. Negative, well. negative. <laughs> with that, with that being said, with that being said, the, the Utah Jazz wow. plan excellent ball. I will give them that, but I'm I'm, I'm not ready to put them, you know, in, in the L.A. Lakers class yet because if, if push comes to shove, they get bounced out of there in five. I'm not ready to put them in the L.A. Clippers <laughs> class, you know, right now because if push comes to shove, they get bounced out of there in six in the first round because Are I'm still sure? not buying the Clippers Are either. You sure? Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm not buying the Clippers. The Clippers, the Clippers gave, wait, wait. The Clippers gave up a 3-1 lead, too, to the same team. The Clippers lost the same 3-1 lead to the same Nuggets. The same old Gatorade girl, the same old towel boy, the same old... Give credit where exactly. credit's due. The Denver Nuggets are a great team. To come back, uh, to, uh, have, to have a 3-1 lead, it doesn't mean uh, if you blow that. Like, you, you're playing a quality team. If they can come back and beat you three games in a row. See, see, I would normally agree to that, but see, this is this is the thing that bothers me about the Utah Jazz. Okay, first and foremost, um, I hate them. What they passion? Like, what what they bleeding passion? I I hate them more than I hate. Thomas I do too, Lakers bro. I'm a Laker fan, King. just like you. Trained you know, to hate uh, arch enemies. <laughs> so, with, 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 with that being said, you know what I'm saying. I I have a hard time accepting the fact that. Um, they are at the top of the Western Conference. I have a hard time accepting that right now. I, I really do. Now, again, they're playing excellent ball. I will give credit to what credit is due. If the MVP voting ended today, Donovan Mitchell 
will probably get his name uh, some type of, I don't know if you'll win it, but uh, he'll, he'll definitely get more votes than he would have gotten a year ago. Um, you know, Snyder is coaching his tail off. Um, I, again, they're, they're playing excellent ball, but we are literally 20, maybe 20 some odd games into the season. They're at the top, at the, they're, they're a half game ahead of the LA Lakers right now. And I'm not buying them to make a legitimate postseason run at all because I've seen this. I've seen this movie before. I've seen it. I've watched it. I've enjoyed it. I've had popcorn ready, extra butter. I've seen it. I loved it. I'm not. Buying, I'm not buying you talk. This is this is critical sports city. I, I I preach no hate. These two are church going guys. They both preach hate. I was brought up in the church. I don't know that word hate. Like, I know not to say it or speak it. See no evil, hear no evil, you know? And these these guys, one is a preacher's son, and the other one is a God-fearing individual, and these guys have it in them. I'm trying to give the props where props are due. Like they're saying, I'm trying to bring Utah they flowers. I don't like Utah either. I remember my son. I remember, listen, I'm I'm an 80s baby that grew up in the 90s young. I remember Kemp and Malone going at it. Malone would beat us. We would beat Malone. Like, I, I'm in the same stuff. I, I know it. I know, I know how you feel. But a 10-game streak? With a team that we I, – I cannot think of them ever putting it together with the pieces that they have on this team. And the one thing that is helping them, even with them losing a 3-1 series in the playoffs, experience. They've been through it. They knocked off the Thunder one year. They came back around and had their lumps up against Houston, and you guys took them out. And then they were up 3-1 and didn't close that series up against Denver. They've taken on the best in the West so far. And they have a, a young superstar. Yeah, that's right. I'm calling Donovan Mitchell a superstar. And he's helping them get there. He's carrying them over the hump, and he's a closer. He wants the ball. That's what I want out of players. Like, if you're the name or the face of the team, give me the ball. Move, move. Get out the way. You're giving them that fan move. Every four corners. That's what my coach would call it. He would call North Carolina four corners. That was our, our, our play. North Carolina, everybody standing the four corners. Whoever had the mismatch, get up top and get past them and get to the rim. They can't do nothing. They, and that's exactly what Donovan's doing. He's spreading the floor. He'll get a jump shot or, or tap somebody up with a crossover that they can't sit in front of and hit the shot. This, that's that's the basketball that I know. That that's what I, I grew up off of. And and that's almost I feel good in talking about it because like that's like twenty or thirty percent of the NBA that I'm used to seeing. I'm not used to seeing this new NBA where you see LeBron flopping like he got a Jerry curl in his hair like oh. Oh my God, my hair is wet. Like, like, no, that's that's not the basketball I'm used to seeing. I'm used to seeing this type of ball. Take advantage of the mismatch and, and move on, or have a defender at the rim like Rudy Gobert block shots or contest them and make them make a, a bad move or assessment at the rim, and we can rebound or or get a steal or a block. That, that's that's the basketball I know. Um, Vinny, your thoughts on Utah for the start that they're off to, uh, especially in a ten game winning streak. They are past the Lakers and the Clippers at this point in time in the Western Conference. Impressive, impressive. They're they're uh, they're the story right now in the NBA. Um, I feel like I agree with what everybody else was saying, Eric and, and Sirius, that they're going to fizzle out. I don't think they have, and they have it to to kind of make that run in the playoffs. They're like so they're like the regular season team. They're like the team that kind of makes a noise and people start talking about them a little bit in the regular season. Like I was I was saying before, how the NBA is it's it's uh it can be like a long season, and you can really look at teams and say I think at the end of the day it's going to be this team or this team. The Jazz, I can say they're going to be maybe at best case scenario uh, conference finals against the Lakers, and they lose. <laughs> That's the uh, best case scenario for them. For right now, though, they look they look good. They have they see they don't they don't have. I'm not going to give it to to Donovan Mitchell, even though he's from my hometown. I'm not going to give it to him to be that superstar 1A player that um, that some of these other guys are. I'm not going to put him on like a Durant level or a or a Steph Curry or LeBron level, and and or a hard, even a, like a Harden or somebody like like I, I think that the certain players are just on a on their own level, and I don't know that Donovan Mitchell is is ever going to be able to get there. Yeah, I, I think that right now he's definitely a big shot like 1A. Like I feel like he's like up there with like a Kyrie. Like they're like, uh, you know, they're great, hey, like great NBA players. <laughs> no, yeah, they're, that's they're, well, they're Kyrie's one of the best so players in the there. NBA. Donovan Mitchell yes. is no doubt about a superstar, folks. There, right. There's no doubt about it. This guy has gotten so, uh, better and better e- each year, and this year he has elevated his game into the conversation with the elite. So there, there's no denying that. 
Yeah, no, I mean, the, the only denial I have is, is what we talked about earlier. Like, there's, no, there's no hardware there. There's no – even when he was at Louisville, it was there were, there were no real – He's not really. He's not really bringing. He's not really bringing the hardware home. And but he's a clutch, he's a clutch player, and he's, he's, he's he he's hasn't like, had the chance. He offense. has not had the chance. Well, he's, he's only know, he's been in the league. This is his fifth year in the league. How do you? I mean, how do you say no. he hasn't had the chance? He. I mean, hold on. Say he. He yeah. has the keys to the kingdom. How do you mean he hasn't had the chance? The ball is in his this hand. This is the best. This is the best team time. that they've had. They've gotten better each year, like uh, Ty just uh, touched on. Uh, they lost in the playoffs. That's valuable experience. You know, they've they've gone against the top dogs. And when you go through a seven-game series like that, you learn a lot, and you learn a lot about your team, and you watch film, and, and they're not going to make that mistake again. I can guarantee it. If they're ahead in the series 3-1, to one, look for the Utah Jazz to be able to close that out. So uh, Rudy Gobert's uh, elevated his game. All these guys have gotten better, and they're playing great together. I agree. Okay, I agree so with you, Eric. I, I, wanted think to, I, I wanted to bring something to you guys' attention real quick. I wanted to bring something to you guys' attention real quick. I mean, I understand they're on a the 10-game winner streak, but I'm doing some digging on their schedule here. They beat the Spurs, the Clippers, the Suns, the Thunder, the Timberwolves, the Trailblazers, the Clippers, the Suns again, the, and the Suns again. Like, I mean, they did beat the Bucks. They won again last the night without uh, Donovan Mitchell. They they won convincingly over the Mavericks <laughs> without him. <laughs> player. He, he may even start on the All-Star team a couple times in his career, but that doesn't put you on the level of like a LeBron James or a Kevin Durant or a Steph Curry who do this year in and year out and then bring championships home. He's doing it like, year that, in like, and year out. Not... He's doing it year in and year out. He's doing this year in and year so, out. What's he doing, Ty? You make it seem like he scored 16 points a game last season or something. Like You're making it seem like he had a drop. No. This dude is getting better. This guy averages 22.7 a game for his career. I'm saying he's an all star. He's getting better. Yeah, he's a great player. He's an all star. So you said he's on Kyrie's level. You said he's on Kyrie's level. You said he's on So here's where you're missing me. When there's when I'm on, on, there's like tiers of great players. And the, the top tier, there's only like four or five players on that tier. It's like Durant, Steph, LeBron, Giannis. I, I won't even put Giannis there yet because he hasn't won anything yet. But like those are like and Giannis is in a superstar. Okay. Oh, so okay. so I'm just Giannis saying is, I'm saying Giannis you have to have the star. talent and you have I'm saying you have to have the talent and you have to have proved it in the play. You have to have done it and the, and you haven't yet. So you so you so you could be so Donovan Mitchell could be like on the level with Giannis, maybe a little bit uh, whatever people's opinions are. But you, until you actually win and get there, then that's, that, then that's, that's it. And, like, with Utah, I feel like it's the same story with them. Like, they're solid. They're a solid team, strong foundation. They have uh, – they're strong at every position. Conley's a good point guard. Clarkson's a great – why they won last night, they got Clarkson, who's a great backup, and he, he actually is – he's a great scorer. Ingles is good at the small forward. They, they have uh, – Gobert's a, 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 great, a great big guy, and they have a backup that's pretty, pretty strong too. So they're going to be – they're going to be solid, and they're going to be able to move make, move move forward probably within the playoffs because they have. And in the regular season, they'll be really solid too. They'll be able to withstand injury. But long term, like in, in the playoffs, it's just like I don't know. That's where you need the you need the LeBron. You need you need the the player who's going to be the, the Kevin Durant who's who's going to be able to uh, to win it. But I, can Donovan Mitchell turn into that? Maybe. I don't know. I, I he's not there yet. That, that I'll just say that much. Maybe. But he's a great player, great team, taking nothing away from him. Can he? He's young still. He's still like what, twenty five? Can he become that? You're, you're taking a I lot don't think from so. him. You're taking a lot from him. You mean to tell me that you're you're that Giannis is not on that level? Giannis, the highest paid player in the NBA. He is the highest paid player in the NBA. You're saying Kyrie is not on that level, and Kyrie hits a game winning shot and Steph grill, and you gave Steph the credit. 
Like, I don't, I, you're taking okay. a ton from him and saying that he's you're, on the level you're not, of Tyree. You're not listening, you're not listening not, to my words. Hold on, hold on. You're not I listening to my words. You, how you get on the level, rap. how you it's get to that it's level is you have to win a championship. You are Once you win a championship, rap. now you qualify to be on that level. Until you win an NBA championship, you can never qualify. But until you win a championship, you're never going to be on that level. You understand? Okay, so Kyrie won a championship. So Kyrie won a championship, and Kyrie's not on that level. You're telling me. Okay, I, you know what? I'll say, I'll put Kyrie on a, a level above Donovan oh Mitchell, but I'm not going to give that no, championship. Whatever. I'm not going to give that championship to Kyrie over LeBron. I mean. Think about what you're like, even saying. I didn't say you were like, you're, you're, you're judging like him when his career like is just getting started. Wait, wait, hold on. Serious, serious, serious. Did I say that Kyrie was better than LeBron? Did you hear me say that at all? No. No, you didn't. But, okay. but, but so LeBron, the, the, the championship with, was more with was more because of LeBron than it was because of Kyrie. Well, go ahead. But you're, go no, ahead. I'm, not, I'm not saying that look, look, Kyrie hit the shot and got a championship and took the big shot, like I said, like, you know, like where we grew up. In the 90s, Mike was fan and Scotty and all of them out the way. Mike will take him to the post, do the shimmy, and hit the shot. Donovan Mitchell has done this against Carmelo, Russell, Russ Brooks, and Paul George. Came up against Houston and tried to do that. Came up short up against Houston and went into a series as a youngster, what, 24, 23 years old, up against the, the Nuggets. And the Nuggets was determined because they had their bit of experience before he did. And you're telling me that he's not so a what do you want? because he didn't win a ring? The dude is in front of LeBron James in the West right now. So where do you where do you want to where do you want to put him, Ty? Where, so tell me where you want to put him then. He's a superstar. Dog, he's carrying Utah. He's on top okay. of the West. I said he's an all-star. He's, he's, Wait, hold he's on, hold an on. all-star. Listen, yeah, listen, 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 I agree. He's an all-star. Last year. There was a fair picture last year. There was a fair picture last year. It was like the Eastern Conference is like Dorothy walking up the yellow brick road. They said the Western Conference is like Thanos in the Infinity War. And they are sitting on top of Donald's in them? Are you bugging? Are you bugging? Come on. I don't even know. You I just sat here and said, Giannis, you just I think sat here and said Giannis yourself. is not a superstar. Giannis is not a, the no. dude. The dude is one of the best. Ty, 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 this is the thing. This is the thing with you. I said that to get on a certain tier, you have to win a championship and bring a championship home to your city. That is a tier of player that I'm going to put that you can get to that level. Until you win a championship, you cannot be considered to be on that level. So that level that, I, that, I'm, that I'm saying, Donovan Mitchell is not there yet. He's an all-star, okay. a superstar, whatever so you our, want to call our, it. Maybe he'll, maybe he'll start Westbrook, an all-star our, our game. Westbrook, so are Harden and Westbrook superstars? Yeah, Ty, they're superstars, yes. Yes. Wow. So they, they both of them never want to ring. So, so, so what are you telling me? They're not on the, they're not superstars on the same level as Durant and and, and Curry. They're not on that level. Hardware does no. not define a superstar. It, it doesn't. You're it doesn't. You're out of your mind. It does though, because you, 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 you have to have that it factor to be able to win it. You have to be able to to take it home. You could have all the talent in the world. There's, I've known so many crazy talented athletes. Look at the Marcus Cousins. He's probably more talented than anybody. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of players in the NBA and all what? sports that are amazingly Cousins. talented, but. I'm just – I use that as an example. There's a lot of players who are extremely talented that don't ever win anything. Let me ask you a valid question because I'm going to move from this because I'm getting way more frustrated than trying to allude to a show. Is DeMarcus Cousins better than <laughs> Jokic? Is he better than Jokic? Is he better than Jokic? What are you talking about? What is that? Are you asking me that question? Are you asking me that question, Ty, or who you lose that question for? He asked if Jokic was better than Cousins. You're at, are you asking me, Vinny, that question? That's that's what you you want you want me to ask yes, to answer Vincent, that? Yeah. Yes, Vincent. Ask you that question, Vincent. Yes. Who's better, Jokic or Demarcus Cousins? Y- Jokic is a better player. He's a better prospect. He's younger. He hasn't been hurt. And you're saying that he Demarcus has more talent than everybody in the league. I'm not saying it tomorrow. I'm, I, I figured to be speaking that he was a, he's a talented athlete. John Wall's another one. He's extremely talented. The guy's faster than anybody don't I've ever seen. He with Please the ball in his I'm hand. Cooking. I'm about to fry the heck out of you. I'm cooking. Ty, because what you do is, Ty, is this is what you do. Big, you, you, take things, you, take, you take my words out of context, and then you start, saying, he, and you start saying things that, 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 that how you hear them. Ty, I was using Demarcus Cousin as an example not you taking it literally like you're like oh, 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 oh hold up hold up everybody. what am I supposed you to say to that wait wait you said the Marcus Cousins you're, you're saying this on air you're saying this on air you think you seriously 
Wait, didn't you just say you're, before you're that, that Harden this on air. and wait, you, uh, Kyrie wait, 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 and Durant are just as good as was, Pippen wait, wait, wait. and Jordan super... and Rodman? This is what you said before, and nobody said anything. We got to take you seriously when that's what you said? You think that that big three is better than Jordan's big three that won six championships? Like, what are you talking about, man? What are you smoking tonight? Come on, Yo, the first three, the, the first three wasn't all Rodman and, and uh, Pippen and Jordan. And to be honest, that was dominated by more Jordan than anything. Pippen played defense on the strongest player, and Rodman got his rebounds and played big. Deep, he played big, uh, defense on the big. But if you're looking at the capabilities of what KD, Harden, and Kyrie could do with the ball offensively, and I said offensively, I didn't say no other way. You already gave me three different scenarios on a superstar and ran from each of them and said, "What I'm on." You're in California. What are you on? You tell me. Ty, what is a, su- what is a superstar, what you're Ty? You're, Give us a listen, definition listen, of a superstar. You, listen, what is you a superstar? Gave me a Answer my question. I'm what is a superstar? You, you gave me a classification of a superstar. You gave me a classification of a superstar and said Kyrie wasn't on the level because Kyrie Now I want to hear your classification. 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 I'm giving it to you. You're saying that, that these guys need to win a championship, and you skipped over Kyrie saying that he didn't, and he did. And you try to reach Now I want to hear your classification of a superstar. Now I want to hear your classification of a superstar. A, a superstar is a closer or somebody that these guys look at at the bulletin board and put at the top of their list. They're putting Donovan Mitchell at the top of their list on a guy that they need to stop. They need to stop him right a clo- now. Period. A closer is somebody the they court. put on their bulletin board? A closer is somebody they put on of their course. bulletin board? Of course. So a superstar, a superstar is a closer that they put on their bulletin board. So elaborate. Elaborate. Guys that want the shot at the end of the game or somebody that's going to make a crucial play at the end of the game to close the game. <laughs> so they have, hey, so Donovan Mitchell is averaging 24 so, points so every, a game. So every team's got a superstar then? So every team's got a superstar then? I didn't say every team's got a superstar. If you're averaging 24-plus in this league, you're a superstar. According to your classification, every team doesn't have somebody that can knock the show down. Who on the Knicks can close the show? Who do you look to on the Knicks that can close the show? I go to your, I go to your will frame. Like who on the Knicks can close the show? Who is the guy? I don't know. Who, 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 who on the Wizards? You don't know. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Who on the Wizards can close the show right now? Bill, right? Bill. Bill, right? But he can't Bill, close the sure. show, right? But he's a superstar. Yes or no? Matter of fact, that's a better question. Is Bill a superstar? Yes. Is Donovan Mitchell? Is Donovan Mitchell? No, he is. What are you talking about? I said he is a hundred times. Why do you keep on trying to like backtrack me to say that he's that he, he Donovan Mitchell is an all star, a superstar? Yes. <laughs> Why aren't where aren't you hearing about that? I'm I'm done. I'm done. You you just said he was an all star. Said Good. he was a superstar, and now you're saying he's a superstar. Hey, I would I would like to bring up something real quick, folks, uh, if you don't mind, because we're we're beating a dead horse with this. Uh, right. uh, the Detroit you. Pistons, 104 to 89, with a minute 30 left. The Lakers did not score. This is their first bucket they just got in the last three minutes. The Pistons have been on a tear. The Lakers need to get their offense figured out. Nobody wanted to take a shot. LeBron was missing shots. Uh, it was a pathetic last three minutes, and the Pistons are on the verge of beating the Lakers by double digits right now. Uh, just like you said, Ty, Caldwell Pope, you know, another 28 minutes, only six points. Uh, he was passing up shots. Uh, it's it's pretty uh, alarming. I know it's early, but this is concerning. It is now 107-89. to 89. The Lakers, with or without Anthony Davis, should have put it on the Detroit Pistons tonight. But instead, they're getting blown out of the water. Okay. I do have Nas in the building. Nas, welcome to the Cafe. How are you feeling this evening? Uh, Stop the presses. Trade everybody. The season is over. The Lakers lost a regular season game. My God. (laughs) Somebody got to get fired. (laughs) Yo. You, man. You, you do not relax. know what's Relax. Right. Listen, so, so what's welcome going to on? the cafe. How, how are you feeling this evening? Oh, there's a lot going on right now. How are you, though, this, this evening? Man, I'm good, man. I'm good. What's going on with y'all boys? Uh, we, we have a discussion that I'm trying to float away from because this has gotten heightened. If, if you'd like to hear, I don't know how much of it you caught, 
If there's anything that you'd like to allude to before I get oh, away no, from no, it. Oh, no, 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 no. If it went bad, don't try to draw me into it. Please move to the next thing. No, no, no. I'm not 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 I'm but leave, leave me for everything else, bro. Huh? Okay. <laughs> My name's no Paul. Okay. And that's all y'all? Okay, that's got you. No problem. Mm-hmm. Okay, no, no doubt. So so since you are here out of the dirty, your thoughts on the Hawks at this point in time, they are playing good ball. They are coming off an interesting win, too, uh, just as recently. I mean, please elaborate on your team. Take your care of business in the filthy, nasty, dirty South. Yeah, yeah, the Hawks look good. I, I think they're where everybody expected them to be. Uh, Trey was banged up for a while, so he wasn't playing too well. Then they had the little dust up between Trey and John Collins about John Collins' touches, which is understandable because the Hawks don't want to give him the extension, and he wants to kind of you know show show himself well this year. So they had a few problems with each other, but Capella getting healthy kind of changed everything. Like when people saw the Hawks with a healthy Capella, that was the the playoff type team that that everybody was talking about preseason. So yeah, they look good, man. And as they get a little more healthy, we can kind of get Gallinari in that rotation a little more. Hopefully Bogdanovich can come back second half of the season. There's a possibility that could happen. And you incorporate Rondo. Yeah, things are looking good. Hopefully they can stay in the top eight. They're sitting tied for six. I, I really want to say seven, but they're tied for six uh, with the Cavaliers at this point. I, and it's strange to see the Cavs doing this type of work, but I got to give Sexton his props. Sexton has been balling, but the Hawks are doing their just due in the Eastern Conference. Okay, um, is there anything that you uh, would like to allude to? Uh, I'll come to you first, Vinny. Anything that you'd like to allude to throughout the, the league that you'd like to put up on the board? No, no, just uh, uh, appreciate the, the spirit of debate, Ty. I'm always going to call you, Ty, on it because I because you you do that, you put words in my mouth and and and, and twist what I say. So uh, well, the reason why I, I I get defensive Dude, is it, because I I want to I want to I want good good. So put it behind up. me with that with, with that behind us. For you with that say, behind for us, you to I say have he's not uh, a superstar, like you would lose a ton of credibility saying that he's not a superstar, dog. Okay, but I'm not again. I don't know. What I mean, I'm not gonna say that I didn't say that. Anyway, um, I don't have anything else to say that other than um, I really appreciate that basketball is back and, and we can do this discussion all, all the time. I I appreciate all you guys. You're, you're you guys are a wealth of knowledge and um, the spirit of debate and the passion. I I just love the fact that Ty that you could pull that out of me and um, yeah, just keep us keep doing this. Keep, keep it going for real. Thank you. Okay, uh, seriously, anything that you like to throw out there uh, for the cafe tonight? You know, man, we uh, we, we 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 talked about a lot tonight. Uh, one thing that we did not discuss um, that I think we need to, and that's maybe a little bit prematurely, but it seems like there's going to be an All Star game now. Um, it was called off due to you know COVID restrictions and whatever the case may be, but it looks like the league is trying to put together some type of an all-star festivity game, you know, whatever the case may be. I wonder what that's going to look like. Um, you know, they're going to have, you know, you know, LeBron and, you know, Giannis kind of do the, you know, pick them thing and they're going to, you know, sequester them in, 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 in a bubble or I'm curious to see how they um, do that. And I want to say this before we even get cracking. If I mean, this is probably unlikely, but, you know, there, there there are some teams, there are some people that need to be all stars that have not been all stars. Obviously, Bradley Bill, you know, introduction from us because again, the, the dude is seriously single handedly um, making the Washington Wizards, you know, even watchable because of what he's able to do all off the ball. But Sexton is, is another guy, you know, who may get some all star consideration. Um, you know, there's, there's, there's some other players. Maybe Capella gets in, like my man uh, Nava alluded to. You know, you know, on the eastern side, or if they decide to pick them, like they do schoolyard ball. Um, which one of the big three in in Brooklyn gets left out? You know, um, who coaches the teams? You know, there's so many questions. But I'm curious to hear you guys' thoughts on 
how All-Star Weekend could potentially look if they indeed pull this off. Eric, do you agree that there should be an All-Star Weekend or should they follow the protocol to remain safe? Uh, from a biased opinion, I'm I'm sick of all this coronavirus thing. You know what I mean? It's it's time to get fans back into the building. Uh, people are getting vaccinated now. We got masks, so uh, people should be allowed to be at the game. If they want to have a mask mandate, that's fine. And by all means, the NBA needs to have an All Star Weekend. Uh, you know, uh, out of all the professional sports. Uh, the NBA puts on the best All-Star game and weekend out of any, uh, you know, the Pro Bowl's a joke, but the All-Star game is very fun and entertaining. you got guys going out there and balling. Uh, so I, I think it's important that the NBA puts it on this year. Um, and, uh, you know, just wear masks, uh, you know, keep keep doing what they're doing. But uh, uh, there's no – if they're playing games right now – what what's the protocol for not having an all star game? I, I think they need to go ahead and go on with it. It's best for business. Naj, your your thoughts on the situation and scenario of the All Star Weekend being put back into play? Do you agree or disagree? Yeah, well, as an unpopular person here, I, I'll just tell you, uh, no, they should be on Zoom. They should get a plaque, hold up the plaque. Hey, I made the All Star team. <laughs> and then you, you you get your couple of days off and you keep it moving. Uh, there's just no reason to do it, man. You're already tempting fate, trying to get everything done. This is a huge pro- project, even getting through a season. So why complicate things by having a, a event that could become a super spreader event where you got all of these different teams, all these different players, where something can spread and then you got a problem. The way things are now, worse come to worse, we get something like Memphis to where, okay, that one team has severe problems. We'll sit them out for a week, for two weeks, like they've done uh, right now. But if you have an All Star event where you bring in all these different guys, different teams, and all the players who are one going to come to that anyway to participate in the other parts, you're taking a big risk. So to me, we're not out of the woods yet. Uh, the virus has no feelings. The virus doesn't care if you're tired of it. The virus doesn't care if. <laughs> You would rather be doing something else. This is reality. This is what we have to deal with, so we need to work around it. Yeah, and I'm I'm like I'm caught in between because I want to see these games be played. I, I love the All Star Weekend, but I agree with Nas to the fact that we can't risk people jeopardizing their health and their lives. At the end of the day, you know, people are going to try their best to be in the arena, whether it's the the three point shootout or if it's the dunk contest or skills competition. People are going to try to be there and then just picture them leaving that arena and going to their respective city because I think it's supposed to take place in Houston. I'm not sure if that is the city or not. I have to look on that. But um, oh my, I know that it goes, they better not be in Houston. No, no, man, look. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the population per Instagram model in Houston should remove them from the list already. Like, no, do not <laughs> let NBA players descend upon Houston. <laughs> look. <laughs> <laughs> I know, you're so silly. <laughs> if you're gonna do it, it need to be in Mayberry. I know. I know. But I'm just okay. So I, I'm gonna look and see which city that they are trying to bring it to. Um, but just like I said, this picture we got me on talk to it now. This picture people trying to get to, from their respective cities there and then get back home and what they can potentially bring back home, or if, if they came from a a hot zone city that has it and bring it there too. And then we have a whole nother issue, another problem. So um, this is something I want to, you know, watch closely. It's fun to hear that they have the, the uh, all-star weekend voting going around and they're trying to put this back into play. But if you're trying to be this safe up until this far, you've had them in the bubble as a, I got, okay. So it'll be in Indiana. Okay. Okay. Even better. So they're, they're North. But even still, having them come from different locations of the country and all the cities that they pass through and the flights, so on and so forth, um, I, I don't know if it is worth jeopardizing, you know what I'm saying, and then having these numbers raised within the week, you know what I'm saying? So kind of like what Nasa said, have these guys get their all-star break and their vacation away from everything, let them get that week to refresh, 
and go on from there. So, uh, I mean, we missed a lot in last season. It, it won't be much to miss an All-Star Week in this season, but that that is me. But I do understand the other side of the coin in the argument as well. Oh, so here's what I would recommend they do. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't really condone the, the NFL Pro Bowl, but they're doing that thing virtually on Madden or something like that. You know what I'm saying? You know, honor the, the, the All-Stars, you know, or on a virtual, you know, 2K or a live or whatever the case may be situation uh, where the winning team, you know, collaborates and donates whatever winning they get to charity or some type of you know, something like that. I mean, here's the thing, like, I'm with, I, I'm with Eric, you know what I'm saying? I'm, this, this COVID-19 thing is, is, is insane. You know what I'm saying? We all can sit here and tell stories about how it affected us each, you know, individually um, and collectively, you know, with loss of loved ones, jobs, whatever the case may be. But at the end of the day, we can't um, – fall asleep at the wheel right now, you know what I'm saying? We we are a lot farther along than we were this time last year, but we're not done yet. So um, I, I do like the idea of honoring the players that, you know, for the first, you know, 20-some-odd, 30-some-odd games uh, ha, ha, have, you know, put their talents on display and been all-star worthy. Um, but I don't think that um, we need to be congregating and uh, – uh, a location from different you know, parts of the country and, you know, trying to do this thing full throttle. But I, I, I am curious, you know, on, on the flip side to see what they come up with. Maybe they don't have a dunk contest or three-point contest. Maybe it's, a, you know, just a, a regular basketball game, you know, where they, uh, you know, put something together, you know, or, or do something. Um, I, I, you know, Adam Silver, not, yeah, Adam Silver in, in the league is, is pretty decent about, you know, figuring things out and being ahead of the curve and being ahead of the technology. And, you know, I'm sure these players are, you know, doing what they need to do as far as wearing their mask and, you know, vaccinations and things of that nature. But uh, it's going to be curious to see what what happens now. All right. Well, any, anything that anybody like to add toward this All-Star weekend and, you know, I, I'm more or less worried about everybody, not just the players too, just, just like the fans, the people that are probably trying to be outside the arena and trying to get autographs and things of that nature because it, it's a lot that goes into these All-Star weekends. And we just, I mean, what is it, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday? So we're three days away from the Pro Bowl, and the Pro Bowl is not being played. So, you know, the NFL likes to get people out there, but they know to try to keep everybody safe, they they better not try to put a, a Pro Bowl weekend together. So it's, it's almost the same type of – class that the NBA has to look toward their All-Star Weekend as well, and I wonder what NHL will be trying to do as well. So it, it, it's a tough environment that we have to deal with as a society, but um, I mean, the hype is there, and if they do get there, and I, I think more or less if, if Chris Paul and LeBron say something and the rest of the, the Players uh, Association follows, then we have a whole other discussion. But, uh, I mean, I agree with the majority of the panel to try to remain safe. All right. Um, I, well, we are at the tail end of the show. Unless you guys have something else, I mean, I, I had two topics, but I don't want to overextend the show. I do want to kind of close the door here. I wanted to ask what you guys thought about the way Dallas is playing and also New Orleans. Like, it's enough is enough for Van Gundy. Like, they, they are sitting as the second worst team in the Western Conference. That should not be happening right now. But that I, I wanted to toss that around. But we we got to close the show. I got people that have to close out, get out of here as best as possible. So I will save this for a later date. Y'all come back into this doggone cafe and watch this heat blow this doggone kitchen up. Eric, I'll come to you first. Give me a plug, close out, shout out, anything that you like to promote as we shut the doors here at the cafe. Yeah, great show tonight, gentlemen. I enjoyed being here at the kitchen with all of you. Uh, we got great content. It got a little heated, which is okay. It's best for business sometimes, but uh Check us out. We're here every week. Check us back next time. Same bat time, same bat channel. SportsCityChefs.com, baby. We doing it. Yes, sir. Um, now as I come to you, even though I got you late, man, give me a plug. Anything that you like to promote as we shut the doors here at the cafe? Yeah, man. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't get to hear what you guys really went into tonight, but it's good. People are talking about the NBA, kind of getting into it. Nice distraction to get away from all the crazy stuff 
Uh, I got a challenge for Royce. Uh, if your life was on the line and you needed a 30-point game out of Andrew Wiggins, how terrified would you be, son, that you would lose <laughs> your gone. life? That's my question for Mr. Royce. I'm always picking on Andrew Wiggins. Yeah, Royce, no. But, uh, you, what? Shout out to Sports City Chef. Shout out to Royce. Shout out to Sirius. Shout out to the villain. Shout out to the homie Doug. Shout out to everybody who joined in as usual. And hopefully next week, man, we can get together and, you know, put on some good good, good food for the people, man. Yeah, I think I got to run it later next week. Next week, I'll I give you a little half hour to get in here, man, and, and get in here. I'm, I'm I, I'm glad that you didn't get involved, and then I'm kind of mad that you didn't hear what was going on, but it's okay, man. You, you just got to listen to the playback. Go press play and fast forward into the show, and, and uh, you already know the slogan. Uh, if any, give me your plug, close out, anything that you like to promote, we shut down the doors here at the cafe. Yeah, uh, yeah. like I said before, uh, really, really excited to have the – the, sh- the show back and um, yeah, keep, keep it going for sure about that. You got a chance to say about the all-star game. I, I agree. That, that, don't do it. Don't do it. It's too much of a hassle so far. Take who, who gets to be in the game and then they can, they can uh, do a zoom in front of their, the, the home city fans and, or whatnot, but there's no point in risking anything. Um, but yeah, I think that we're going to, we're going to be uh, better now that the vaccine's down and everything. So, so knock on wood, that works, but, Happy to be back next week. Um, yeah, let's keep it going. You know what? And, and Eric said it best. You know what? A little passion and, and a little get. <laughs> you tie you do it to me every time, man, because I know you do it on purpose. But whatever. But getting getting each other a little bit riled up is good. For, it's good for business. And uh, go keep it going. Next time I'll try and uh, keep my composure. Next time Ty, try and listen to what I say so you don't have to end up putting words in my mouth. Shout out to Sports City yeah, Chef. This is I a great uh, great been. channel. This is a great channel. We're going to keep it going. And um, just a great group of guys, man. I love everybody here. And uh, thank you. Thank you for keeping us going, Ty. Oh, and Ty, send me um, – text me about the, the Venmo thing. Uh, I, I need an address. Um, thanks a lot, everybody. Kyrie and Donovan are not superstars, people. <laughs> Believe me. <laughs> uh, goodbye, Ty. Goodbye. This is terrible. This is terrible, Sports City. I tell you, this is what I'm going through. All right, series. I need a plug, close out, shout out, anything that you like to promote as we shut the doors here. Yeah, as we can. man, it's your boy, series. Repping that 412 and 703, man. Such a pleasure to be here with you guys on another edition of the Cross of the Cafe, man. Um, wanted to make some things clear for before I get out of here. Um, I didn't want to appear as though I was upset. Uh, earlier, I had a family emergency come up. I had to jump off real quick, but as you see, your boy bounced right back. You know, man. Here's the thing, man. I love, I, I love about this thing. You know what I'm saying? All five of us sitting here are very, very passionate about what we're doing, and, and sometimes, you know, stuff gets heated. And you know what I'm saying? We got a, we got a guy who swear he's a hero, but he's not really a hero. He likes to stir some stuff, and you know, I mean, he, he you get what you get. You get what you get, man. With that being said, man, Dylan wasn't able to make it in the day. I love you, my guy. Stay up, Nas. You were going here earlier. Shout out to my dude, Nas. Uh, Royce wasn't able to pop in today. Thomas, I hate your stinking guts. My man, Vinny, pleasure to meet you like always. Arky out there in, in SoCal, man. It's a pleasure to kick it with you guys, man. Lord willing, uh, we'll be back in the building probably Sunday uh, for the brunch, man. We'll be back in the building Sunday for the brunch. One thing I want to leave you guys with, I got to get out of here, man. I said this when I was talking about the NBA. We are a lot farther along than we were. We've got a long way to go, man. Make sure you do diligence, man. Make sure you, you know you, you, you know who's in the corner, who's around you at, at all times. Uh, we live in a crazy-ass world. We live in a crazy world, man. God bless you. See you guys next time, man. GameStop, yeah, GameStop, buy your stock tomorrow yeah. morning. Get in there. Get your bread on. You you don't even know, man. There's so much stuff going on right now. Bro, that one of my boys, right? Take this out. You laughing. No, this is getting serious, like, around the world and, and how crazy this world is. Interesting that series brought that up. One of my boys, and I'm mad that, like, Eric cut out. But Eric don't got nothing to do with it anyway. But one of my boys, he's an African-American. His sister resides in Colorado. Do you know that the Proud Boys have threatened his sister and family's life so bad that the feds had to help him 
and his family get out of Colorado. This is how bad it is in America today. And they they stapled the words proud boys just because they're African-American. Mind you, it's a female. Mind you, she's a female. And then I don't know if she has a husband or whatever or boyfriend, but they had to get, they had to uplift everything as much as they could, not everything, but they had to get as much as they could out of that house and leave the Colorado area and come home to their respected uh, legitimate location where they were from. And um, it's it's bad where we are right now, and um, they masked it for years. And I, I don't want to get, like, too emotional about this, but I am because it just is fresh to me today. Like, this came to me today. And um, I'm tired of it. And I grew up in a city that's heavily diverse, so it's like I haven't seen this type of prejudging or racism but now it's on an all out spectacle while we're trying to heal. You know what I'm saying? And and having these issues like trying to get us together at certain locations and then if there are certain locations people's lives are in jeopardy and seeing a scenario where they had rallies and they, they took it out on a black girl that was walking down the street on the other side of the street, they all jumped her. Like it this is happening in America. And um I'm glad that we have sports to try and unite us but still it can get heightened. So that's why, like, my argument was there. Like, I've, I'm, I've, I've determined not to be walked on like that. It's, it's not, it's not going to happen, especially when I feel and, and know in my bones that I got this. Like, like, and I've been watching this sport for too long to hear that Kyrie ain't no superstar, even though people feel a certain way about him in this area of the tri-state area. Or hearing that Donovan Mitchell ain't a superstar and you're from the same city as him. You are from Greenwich, Connecticut and got the nerve to say that this guy ain't a superstar. Like, I, I, I don't get it. And, and he's not here in Connecticut no more. He lives in California and don't see what he's doing for this area. He does things for the area. Like, so I'm, I'm not going to watch that happen, man. So I'm, I'm going to just end it on the best that I can. Sports City, you already know how this go down. SportsCityChef.com, we got big things going on. I'm going to let you guys in on the secret, Sports City. In the next week or so, we will be simulcasting with a legit radio station here in the kitchen. That's right. So everybody that's been listening in, tuning in, if you're calling in, we cannot have any curse words. I stress that because we will literally be syndicated here in Sports City, and I'm I'm too proud about that and working this hard to get this far to where we are, Sports City. I'm I'm at the edge of my seat waiting for this to happen. So every last one of y'all, I don't care who you are, I don't care if you love me or you hate me. In the words of Beanie Siegel, to know me is to love me. On that note, tell a friend to tell a friend that this is Chefs again. And if they don't know, now they know. Sports city, sports city, chefs, chefs. Sports city, sports city, chefs, chefs. Sports city, sports city, chefs, chefs. Sports city, sports city, chefs. chefs. Sports city, sports city, chefs. Kaboom! Sports city chefs is in the room, cooking up hot topics to put up on your spoon. They well in tune, blown like a flower in June. Superman vs. MF Doom, the clouds loom. So tell a friend, it's the sports city chefs again. Pay attention, tune in. We on the set again. Sports City, Sports City, Chef, Chef, Sports City, Sports City, Chef, 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 Chef,